everything. My name is Ana Maria Perez. I am the librarian at Juarez Lincoln High School. I have been with the district for 20, I'm going on my 21st year and have been a librarian for nine years. So that's a little bit about me. I know we're kind of late getting started, so I wanna get started right into the content. Today, we are going to be talking about Google Sites. And whenever some, we talk about uh, creating a website, everybody kind of like, no, I don't know how to do that. I'm not too techy. What Google has done is made it very simple for us to create a site for basically about anything that we want to create a site for, whether, and we'll get into um, the different, um, the different things you might want to create a site for, but you have unlimited amount of Google sites that you can create all with your Google account. So today is going to be kind of like that Google Classroom basic. You can get really fancy with some of these Google sites, um, but for the most part, today's training is just the basics. Um, I do want to remind you all that hopefully you are watching on your phone or another device and that you have your laptop close to you so that you could be um, playing around or clicking and creating your site as we do it live. Um, but rest assured, if you do not, if you're just listening, it's okay. This session is being recorded, so you will have access to, to a recorded session where you can pause the video and watch it step by step a little slower. So don't worry about having access to this presentation and the resources with that survey link. Like I mentioned, you will get access to all of the resources shared plus the video that is being recorded right now. So like I said, unlimited amount of sites that you can create. Um, and I'll, we're going to show you how you can do that. So the first thing is, is there's a couple of ways, just like with Google, there's always like three or four ways you can get to Google Sites. Now, there is a new Google Sites. Before um, the new Google Sites, Google Sites was very difficult and kind of hard to create. I, I struggled with creating because it seemed too um, advanced for me and it wasn't very user friendly. Um, Google listened and they made the new Google Sites very user friendly. So there's a couple of ways we can get there. As you can see, the first way right here is just typing in sites.new. It will get you right there to a new Google site. Um, the long way to do it is you'll, from Google Drive, you'll click on new, go to where it says more, and then right here in your choices, you can create a new Google site here. So that's, that's how to get there. And we'll, you'll see how I get there right now when we go live. <clears throat> so what can I use a Google site for? There's lots of ways. These are just a few that I'm sharing. I'm sure that you all can think of different ways on how you can use Google sites in either your school, your classroom, your department. Um, this, this is, there's different ways you can use Google sites. The first one being that Maybe you just want a Google site for all the resources. Right. Could you move to the and that can be all of the sites that I shared, for example, in my virtual library. I can create a site where all of my interactive books, I have links to those sites and I can share it out with students. I can share it out with parents. And so it might, you might create a Google site just for your resources alone. Um, you could have a teacher class website. And I recommend actually creating a Google site along with your Google Classroom because sometimes in your Google Classroom, because it's a year long class, you might want students to revisit something that you discussed in the first six weeks and for them to scroll through to use the two in conjunction with each other, a Google site and also Google Classroom. Anytime that I give PD, professional development, if I travel to Region 1, if I go um, to TCEA, or any of those places where I'm presenting, I like to create a Google site because that way, if I update the site with any training materials that I have given during that presentation, my participants always have access 
to those materials, um, regardless of how long they, uh, how long ago they attended the session. So I like to have a PD resource site that I share with my present, my my participants when I'm presenting. Digital breakouts. That's something that is very fun and gamified in learning. Um, we created one for our Google Academy, and it was um, you use the Google site to house all the locks, and they have to answer and break out. And so, Google site is where you actually house um, the breakout so that they can answer there. So we could also use these for teacher and student portfolios. Like I said, some of, sometimes uh, when we're applying for a job or even applying for our masters, they ask for, um, they want to know about us. What have we been doing in our classrooms, in, in, in our teaching profession, in our administration profession, whatever it is that you're applying for, this is a great way to house um, your own portfolio where you show where, what you've did, done, um, the awards you've received, different presentations that you've done um, so that they can see the quality of work that you, that you do. And the same thing is that we want to teach our students how to use Google Sites because just like the college, uh, our admissions process to getting into for, or for a job or for to go into a master's program, they're going to have to submit something for their college application. And some colleges and universities ask for a portfolio like this. Um, this is not uncommon anymore. They're asking not only for paper applications, but they want to see a digital resume. And what not what a, a great way for our students to highlight their products, their work in, in creating digital portfolios. And there's a lot of different ways that we can or sites um, or ideas that you can use for digital portfolios. I like to recommend Google sites because they can if they've created videos, if they've done presentations, if they've received awards, they can package everything really neatly on a Google site. Many of us are um, a club sponsor or a coach. Um, we might be a department head. Uh, all of these are ways that we can create a Google site for that organization. So again, if a parent wants to know what events are happening or see pictures of their, their, their kids participating in the sport, you can highlight them there on a sport webpage or a club organization webpage, this is a great way for you to highlight your students in those clubs, organizations, um, and sports. So these are the different ways I'm sure that you can, um, I, there's uh, schools that have their own Google site like this. Um, it, there's different ways, it's just how you wanna use it, you determine that. We're just gonna give you the tools today. So one thing as I was exploring um, my training or getting pre prepared for this training, I was on my personal Gmail account. So this is not my La Jolla ISD account. Um, this is something I discovered yesterday. Now, if you are familiar with the Google tools such as sites, uh, forms, docs, they offer you a template gallery. So I have this or if you can see here where I have um, circles, I've lost my mouse. Um, you can see that there is now a template gallery for sites, making it even easier for the user to create something. Templates, I always like to recommend templates because it gives our students and us a skeleton, a framework to work with. So there's a lot of, um, slides presentation templates that I share out with the district um, and, and I'll go over those in a little bit but I just loved that now Google Sites has a template gallery to guide not only teachers but students um, in creating their own Google Sites. So if you have a personal Gmail account I'll show you how you can add yourself as a collaborator and that way you can have access to that template that you decide to use from your personal Google account. I know that many of us have personal Google accounts, um, so you can look in that Google account and see if you have this template library available. I looked in the La Jolla 
uh, Google account and we still don't have it. Sometimes it takes a little while for it to roll out to the EDU accounts. So just so that you know, it is coming because I did hear from some other people on Twitter that it was, they were seeing it in their education accounts. So hopefully it will be coming to our domain soon. So just so you can see, there are all types of templates. You have one there for personal. You have a work, um, four different uh, templates for work. And then as you can see there for education, you already have something built. All you'll have to do is go over there and customize it for what you want um, to personalize it for your classroom. As you, can, as you can see there, there's also for a club and again, student portfolio. Great for our students to have a frame, a template they can work with, and then start plugging in their information. So when you go to the new Google Sites, I just want to give you an overview of what you're going to see. To the top, you will see the untitled site. Um, and that's where you are going to give your site a name. On number two, over here to the right top, you'll see publish. And as you can see, it is in gray right now because I haven't worked on this site. It, is, it will be a bluish color so that you can publish. If you do not publish your Google site, it will not be live and no one will be able to see it. So very important and I will be showing you how you can publish your site. Number three shows you all the different things that you can insert. Right off the bat, you can see that you can insert text, images, you can embed a link or an embed code um, so that you can embed things into your website and you can also insert things from your Google Drive. Again, everything works in conjunction very well with the ecosystem with Google. I know that sometimes we are on Safari or if we're on Internet Explorer, Google always works best on Chrome. So make sure that when we're using any Chrome, uh, Google product, we're on Google Chrome. So number four is pages. You have the ability to add multiple pages to your website. Um, and a new feature that I just discovered is that you can also link external sites to your website. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Number five, you can customize themes. Um, there's only about four of them, but still it does offer some customization to your website. So right here, this is the insert menu that you will see. It's kind of highlighted on the bottom of the things that I just described that you can insert. You have different layouts, again, making it easier for the user for them to be able to create a layout that they can just plug in items, such as a picture and text, a variety of pictures and text underneath. You have that facility to just drag that layout into your canvas and create something that looks really professional. In addition, a pro tip that I do want you to uh, notice is that when you double click on the canvas, you will get this little circle to the bottom left that I have here. Um, you will see that little circle if you double click where you can easily add an image, um, at the drive or embed or upload something to your Google site. To the right, that list, long list, are all additional items that you can add to your Canvas site or to your Google site. So all of those things we will be looking at. As you can see, when Google, the new Google sites first came out, it was very limited. Little by little, Google is rolling out different things for you to add to your site to make it very robust. So pages, like I said, when you click to the right of insert, you will see pages. You will have your home page um, and then you'll have that little plus where you can add different pages. So if you want to do uh, a remote learning website just for remote learning, you can put your weekly um, lessons or resources for that week, your Google slide links to your Google Classroom assignments. You can put them there by week. 
so you can create pages by week and your students can go back and look at your um, the different weeks um, assignments or whatever you put on those pages. So to the bottom right, as you can see here, you have um, the new link um, where you can link to external pages and we'll get to try this. So this to the right of pages, you have themes, and this is what makes our themes a little, or Google Sites a little pretty. Ms. Perez. Yes. Ms. Perez, there's some, I think, uh, someone, uh, Ellie, did you pin yourself or something? Because the people that are uh, watching, some people can only see her icon, her bit mode. They cannot see your screen. Let's see. Do we got it? If no. Uh, let me see. That also could be a problem on the internet bandwidth. If uh, internet is slow, it's not going to show the presentation. So they might oh. need to refresh. OK. Let me let him know. Sorry, I just wanted to see so we wouldn't lose some people. Okay, so can everybody see my screen now? I'll wait a couple of minutes. Yeah. Okay, we've got several saying yes, it was showing fine. Yeah, it was just, I guess, maybe on the live stream. I'm not sure. But it had Ellie's uh, a bit emoji pinned. Okay, that's, that's fine. Okay, good. We're getting a lot of yeses. I yeah. think it might be the other side. So I just let him know to refresh, and then we'll, I'll let him know that we're, it's being recorded anyway. Okay. Sorry about so this that. This is the different options that you have for um, kind of as making your Google site aesthetically pleasing. And again, you can kind of play around with this um, different things um, when we start looking at our Google sites. So um, these are just the different logistics of the different menus that you're going to have to kind of get familiar with. Um, when you start deciding, okay, now I need to get ready to publish my site and I want to share it out. So to the, the first thing that you're going to see is to preview your site. And as you're creating your Google site, if you're curious and say, I want to know what my site is going to look like to my students, or I want to know what it's going to look like, that little computer with a little mobile kind of embedded mobile phone boat embedded there that is going to allow you to preview what your site is going to look like to the right of that you'll see the little link that is the link to your published site site now one thing that i'm going to recommend is that google gives you a really long link i recommend that you create a short link to your site that way, just like we've shared those different short links with you, the bit.ly's, um, that way you can, uh, your participants or whoever you're sending your site out to can type in something easy and something to remember your site by. So Google kind of gives you a longer link. You can choose to use that, but I always use a short link to share out with my participants or my students so they can get to my site. But that's the link that you would use to create your short link. To the right of that, you can add collaborators. So if we are working as a team, say we're the first grade team and we're creating a first grade website for our students, for our teachers, um, for our, our parents to have a resource site that they can go to, you can add all of your, your team members, your coworkers um, to that site and they can be adding to that site um, and collaborating with you on building that site. Um, the only thing that is each time that that collaborator adds something, you'll always need to republish your site so that they can see the new additions. So we'll, we'll, I'll share a little bit about that when we go live. Um, your settings, that is on the next page because there's a lot of um, different options for your settings. Um, the three dots, remember I said always explore your three dots. Um, you're going to have the option if you want to duplicate your site. Um, you can duplicate your site and not have to recreate 
all the pictures that you um, you uploaded as far as um, you as a teacher, if you put your picture up there, all your contact information, your hours, and if you want to create a Google site for each period, you can do that and you can duplicate that site. Again, report the problem. Any suggestions that you might have to Google on how they can improve Google Sites, this is where you would report it. Remember when I talked about Google Classroom, that little question mark where it says report a problem or add a suggestion, you can do that as well here. Um, and of course, there's a help menu there and to take a tour of this, the Google Sites. Now publish a very important button this is what you'll see when you click down on that little shark tooth. It gives you the published settings, how you want people to view it. Now, a lot of people say, just like the YouTube channel, I don't want everybody watching my YouTube channel. I just want my students to watch it. That's great. You can, you can make your link or publish your site for only those that have the link can view it. It will not be out there on the World Wide Web. Um, so you can customize it that way. So all of those are in that published settings. You can even unpublish the site. Um, and then again, you can view your site from there as well. Now again, a little bit of the logistics of the settings cog wheel. The, these other settings are really not too important. The one that I will kind of say, where the one that I use is the one to the top left-hand corner, which is the navigation. This is where you want your pages to line up, if you want it on the top or if you want it on the side, and you'll get to see that. The other option there is that if you want, again, a transparent white or black background. Um, so again, those are the tools. The other uh, tools like the brand images, if you have a little logo that you have created for your class or a, an icon that you wanna upload, to make it more customized to and personalized to your um, classroom. You can do that with your brand images. Viewer tools, again, I don't use that as much, but you can explore that right there. And then the analytics. Um, you can't really see the analytics to your Google sites. How that, and the analytics means is how many times people are clicking on your web page. Um, because in our domain, they don't allow for us to have a tracking ID. So it really doesn't apply to us, but I did want to show it because, again, exploring that settings cog, um, I, I just wanted you to see what, or to show you what you would see. So we're going to dive into creating our site. And if you want to take a picture of the different tasks we will be going through, this is what we're going to be doing when we create our sites. We're going to name our site. We're going to add a divider. We're going to add text, a photo. I'm going to show you how you can link your photo to URL websites uh, or a different websites so that when they click on that photo, it directs them to where you want to take them. Um, then, of course, I want you to uh, know that you can embed your Google Slides presentations there. Um, I know that my son, he gets assigned um, uh, Google Slides to review for his social studies content. So it would be great if the social studies teacher had a website with those, um, all those slides presentations that he can review and go through. Um, so you can add your Google Sites there. You can add something from Google Site uh, Drive, and I'm, we're gonna show you how you can put that into your Google Site, how you can add a YouTube video, adding your pages, and again, playing around with your themes. So in, right here in the middle, you'll see that this is what I talked about in sharing with others. This is where you can customize who gets to see your created site. So I am going to log out of this presentation and we are going to go into the live site. So this is what I was talking about in my personal Gmail. So this is a account that I have with um, my, for my library. Before we became a Google EDU district, I created a Google account for my library. So I do want to call attention up here. 
if you notice, there's a little icon here. When I click here, I have the ability to manage multiple accounts on my Google Chrome, on Google Chrome. So I can easily go back and forth to my different Google Chrome accounts. So a lot of people say, well, I hate to log in and log out of, of Google Chrome with my personal and then my La Jolla one. I need to check my email here and over there. So know that when you click on that little icon up here, some of you may have an initial, you can add an account right here. And that way you can toggle through the different accounts that you have. So this is my personal or the, the library Google account that I created. As you can see here, I'm in Google Sites. All I have to do is click there and it's Sites. Um, and then I click on Template Gallery and this is where I get my templates. Now, if I was creating a class site, Google site, I would click here. And it's going to give me this template. And if you notice, I already have the beginnings or a framework of things that I can start adding here. Now, again, we do not have this in our EDU account, but that's not going to prevent us from getting access to this template. All I have to do is come up here where it says share with others, and I click here, <clears throat> and I can invite my, my Google, my uh, La Jolla Google account here. And I need to make sure that I can edit directly. And all I have to do is send it to myself. And now I have access to this template. So very, at least this is kind of a workaround until it goes into our domain. So just so that you can see how I toggle through my accounts, this is my La Jolla and I kind of dis distinguish my accounts by Bitmojis. The one with the little tuxedo is my La Jolla one. And I just click here and it brings me to this site or to my, my, this account. So now I'm going to show you how you can get to Google Sites. So I can go to sites.google.com.new or I can just go to googlesites.new and it'll create it. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and go here so you can see all the Google sites that I have created. Now, as you can see right here on the bottom, and I'm gonna try, I know that sometimes you can't see. So I'm going to enlarge it there and scroll down. You can see now that the, one, the site, that template that I just shared with myself from my personal Google account, is now in my EDU account. And I can start working with this template. So this was mind blowing to me because again, we wanna make this as simple for you to use um, because it's a great tool. As you notice, I've got tons of different Google sites. You have unlimited Google sites that you create, you can create. I always have one that I play around with features. Um, and then, of course, you see some of these that I've used for PD sessions. So just so you know, it's right here for you to use as a template. For right now, I want to create a blank one so that I can walk you through all the different ways or different things that you can add onto your Google site. So I'm going to click right here on the plus. <clears throat> and now it's going to open up a totally new Google site for me. And this is what you all would see when you create your own. Hopefully some of you all are following along so you can be going through these as I'm going through these. So the first thing I wanna do, because you don't wanna have a whole bunch of untitled sites in your um, Google sites. So I'm going to just type in Ms. Bettis's 
classroom. And as you notice, right away, it comes here to the top of my header on my Google slides, I mean, Google sites. And you know that I, uh, you have the option here to add a logo. So if I tap here, again, I can upload something. So I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna grab a Bitmoji that I have. So just, I'm just gonna put this little Bitmoji here, just so that you can see any picture that you decide that you wanna upload, you can. I tend, if I'm giving a PD session on Google Slides, I will put the logo there as a Google Slides. But just so that you can see how you can um, upload an image there to your site, I'm going to go ahead and do that so you can see. It's taking a little bit, but hopefully we'll give it a couple more seconds. Okay, so there you can see, there it is. And now to the right, you see it there. So I just click out of there, and then you can see that little bit emoji logo there. Now, this is your page title. If you want to name it something different from here, I'm just going to keep the same title. Ms. Perez, they want to see how you did the logo again. Okay. Let me just. Okay. So right here, all I have to do whenever you click on this title header, um, you click right here. You all it, on y'all's it will say um, edit or add, add a logo, and that's where you would do it. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and trash this. Hopefully, it doesn't um, take too long. But just so that you can see, when I just uh, put my cursor on this header um, name, all I have to do is click on add logo. It prompts me to this settings. Remember, I showed you the settings. You can also get there using the, the little cog here where it says logo, I'm gonna click upload. When I click upload, like I said, it prompts me to where I wanna get my image from. I'm just going to ch choose this one right here. And there it is. Once it's here, I see it in the logo here, I see it now here and I can always go back and edit my logo there. Yes? So now we have our title. Now notice that whenever I click here, it gives me the option to choose if I want normal text, title, a heading, subheading, or small. Now I know that some of you all were in my Google Classroom presentations where I told you you all, or I shared with you all that you can customize your banners. You can do the same thing here in Google Sites. So those of you that create your custom banner, some of you may not even want to put any text here because you're gonna include it in your banner. So I'm just gonna show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And right here, I have the option to change my image. Just like I did here, I can customize this with an image. I'm gonna pull down on this little shark tooth and I'm going to upload an image. Now, as, like I mentioned, those of you that attended my Google Classroom training, I did a custom banner for my Google Classroom that I created using that dimensions of those templates or the template that I shared out. So right here, I'm gonna upload. And again, I'm gonna go scroll through because I know I have my banner here. And I'm going to use that banner that I created for Google Classroom, just so that you can see how you can customize this now 
And this is not the dimensions. I am going to be sharing with you all the custom dimensions, but you can also change the different ways that you can see it. I can choose to make it a large banner, which makes it less. I can choose cover even less. I can choose it this way, or I can just have the title only. So I will be sharing with you all a template so that you can customize your own. And notice that with this one, it doesn't darken it, but you can change the, the readability so that now your color from that custom banner, you can put it here on your Google site. And I don't wanna have any text because I've already put it in my banner. So the template will be shared with you and I will create a short tutorial on how you can do that if you want it like more step-by-step -step on how I created the banner for the Google Sites. So I'm gonna click on reset because this is not what I want and I can go back here. Now, I can always go back three cl double click and add my text again. So I can add text. Again, I want it to be a heading. And again, I can just put Ms. Pettis's classroom. And it's going to change depending on what I, I choose in my font or my font choice there or the title choice. You see that I can click on the little dots there to move or make it um, change my dimensions of my box. I can also, if you notice, and I think you, you can't see it, but it's shaded. There's these little dots on top that allows me to move my text around, okay? Now I've shown you how you can do custom uh, banners for your Google Sites. There's other pre-loaded, or you can select from the images that are given here. So Google gives you a gallery of different sites or images that you want to, or you can use. So I can just use this computer one. I select it and now it is changed. Okay. So you have that option to, to change it. I can, again, if I want something more solid, if I want to search by URL, um, I can do that or type in a URL or if I already have something in Google Drive. So if you have pictures of your class um, all together, you might want to create your banner with your class photo. So again, choosing here, something like a space. So there's no um, detail or there's different colors that you can choose from as well. All of these are all provided for you in the gallery. So I'm gonna keep that one here. And that is customizing your banner. So the next thing we are going to add, and I like to always include like a little divider. I just click on divider and automatically you'll see a thin line that kind of gives a dividing section for your content that's going to follow. Now, why this, this is very light, this gray, once we start getting into themes, you can see that that divider can change um, choosing the different themes you decide you want to use. So right now it looks, because of the theme that I'm using, it looks very light. So another way that I like to divide sections is by inserting text. So on this is my canvas here. I have a blank canvas. I'm going to double click and I, it calls up this little wheel. I don't necessarily have to come back over here to click on these to add. I can just double click. I double click and I'm going to add an image. I mean, I'm gonna add text, sorry. So as you notice, it created this long text box. So I'm going to put here Google slide templates. Okay. Now I don't want it to the side there. So I'm going to edit it and I want it in the middle. I want to make this a title. 
So you notice it changed based on my theme to a different color. Um, and then I can choose whether I want this to be bold. I click on bold, I can make it bold. But here's what I like to do. You see how I come to the left? It asks me if I want to change that section background or if I want to duplicate this section or if I want to delete this section. I'm going to select a background. So again, I'm gonna go here. You've got some different preferences. Um, if you want it regular, it's gonna be blank like this. If I wanna call a little emphasis, you can see that it shaded it gray. If I want a little bit more emphasis, it is now gonna change it to blue, okay? Then the one that I like the most is that I can choose an image to, again, if I wanna create something, uh, a different banner uh, for my, my, my image background or for this section background, I can do that. But let's look at what the gallery provides. Again, all of these different gallery options. I'm gonna go with a, um, a blue. Yeah. And you can see now that the font color changed so that it's readable. Again, you've got the little stars to the right so that I can click here to make it uh, the color pop or stand out a little bit more. But that's how you can customize the back and give a separation in between the sections. So, yes. Mm -hmm. They're asking how you got the gallery again. Okay. So right here to the left, if I go to section background, because remember I added the text, I come here to image. And then I come down to selecting an image. Once I select on image, it's going to give me the gallery that Google Sites provides for me. But surely you have all these different options where you can choose an image to import into your section. So now I'm going to start importing some images or adding some images because I wanna share some Google site templates. Um, so one of my favorite ones is Slides Mania. So I'm going to go to open up my browser, or actually I'm gonna to come to my picture bookmark right here and go to Slides Mania. If you haven't heard of Slides Mania, um, I highly recommend for those of you that are creating um, slides presentations, they've got a lot of pre, um, a, a lot of uh, templates that you can share out, especially these weekly planners those of you that were in my Google Classroom and those of you that were not, I recommended maybe make having a planner for the day or the week. So there's some that are already created for you and all you have to do is go and customize it to your classroom. So I like this image. So I want to add this image to my Google Sites. So I'm gonna right click and I'm going to go to copy image address. Now remember one of our options always in Google apps is to add in an image using a URL address. So I'm gonna copy this image address. I click on it, copy image address, and now I'm gonna go back to my site. On my canvas, I'm going to again, double click, it pulls up my little wheel and now I'm going to click on images. When I click here, the first choice I have is by URL. And that's exactly what I have. Sometimes your URLs won't work. So you'll have to choose another image. But as you can see, based on that image address, I'm able to capture the image that I want quickly and bring it into my site. So I'm just going to go down here and insert that image. And right away, you can see that I have included that image in my Google site. Now, I want to put a little text box down here because I want everybody to know that this image is for Slides Mania. 
and I want them to be able to click on that image and go to the site. So I double click again, and this time I'm adding text. And as you can see, that text goes right on the bottom of my image. And it's normal text, so I'm gonna write in here, Slides Mania Templates, or Google Slides Templates. And I'm going to center it, so it's in center with my image. Now, I'm going to click on my image. And notice when I click on it, I now have the option to insert a link. So I want to link that image to the Slides Mania site. So I can easily go over here and do a Control C to copy it, or I can just type it out and a Control V. So all I have to do here is click Apply, and now when my site is live, anybody that is on my site will click on this image and it will link them and take them to the site. So let's go ahead and look at the preview option. Remember I said this computer with a little mobile device next to it? If I go to preview, this is what my site is gonna look like. Now I click on it and notice that my cursor went from here to here, letting me know that it has an active link. So when I click on it, it takes me straight to Slides Mania. So this is what we want for our sites because we want to make it as easy as possible for our staff, for our students, for our parents to get to the sites that we need to get them to. So I'm going to X out right here of the Google site and I'm going to add a, another site template. And just so that you can see the process of how I added an image. I know we sometimes need to see it a couple of times so that we can get it. Um, so again, I'm going to double click here, add the image. Wait, let me hold up here. So another one that I like to use is Slides Carnival. Again, about several years um, or like four, four years ago, I presented all of these different templates, shared them out with teachers. Teachers are now using them a lot. I'm happy that you're, they're using these resources that I've shared. Um, again, I'm going to go here to Slides Carnival, click on Copy Image Address, and I'm going to go back here and paste this into my URL. As you can see, this is the image that's going to appear, and I'm just going to insert that image. Now, notice that it's a little, you know, it's not in line with this. And this can be okay, just depends on what you like. There really is no way to make it centered here. That's where Google is a little you know, clunky on in being able to make it to where I can center this logo at the, at the middle of the page and be in line with all the other things that I'm gonna add here. So if I don't like that, I like to just do slides, carnival, logo and then this gives me i come over here to the search and i go to images and then it gives me all of these different logo images so if i choose this one all i have to do again is save uh, the copy the link address again and i can come here and as you can see i can delete this one double click add my image again using my URL link and see it's not allowing me to do this. So I can go back here, choose another one, copy image address, go to my images, see if this one works and this one works. And this one, as you can see, because I got it from a different, there was a little workaround, I'm able to get now a logo that's a little bigger, that's more in line with this, this other image. I double click again, I want to add text. As you notice, I've got these little dots right here. I don't want my text there, I want it down here. 
I can choose to move it that way. And now I can edit that text. Slides Carnival, Google Slides Templates. And now again, I want to link this, and you kind of have to click on it twice because it does connect it or group it together. So now I'm just going to insert the link and I'm just going to type in slidescarnival.com and apply. And now it is linked. One more slide that I just discovered and shared out with our Academy members. Um, this is Slides Go. Another resource, share this with your uh, co-workers, share this with your students, because again, the more resources we can get in the hands of our students so that they can have an idea of how to create their presentations. There's all kinds of really pretty um, presentations out here. Um, I clicked on education, and as you can see, they have all of these different education templates. Um, math templates, chalkboard, they have biology. Um, they also have planners for teachers. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that image URL so that I can add it here. And you all will have an idea of the process of how it goes. Now notice that it has, it's, this is not an image that I can access with the link address. So again, I'm going to go uh, to my search window, and I'm just going to type in Slides Go logo. I go to my images, and I'm just going to choose this one. I click here, copy this image address, double click again, image. Paste this one, it's not working, and this can be kind of a little, let's try this one. Okay, copy image address, come here. And now I have my image. So it, the SVG um, is not a workable um, or a, a image um, that's uh, an image choice or file that Google accepts. So this ending is what's kind of important. If it's PNG, JPEG, it does support it on the Google on the Google site. So here is my slides go, and I'm going to add my text box here. So slides go, Google Slides templates, and now I have a whole resource. And again, this would kind of irk me, and I tried to fix this a little bit more, but because of time and showing everything, um, I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna double click. And when you do double click, you can expand this out, but it kind of gets everything off balance. So just know that you can crop it that way. I'm going to link it. So slidesgo.com and apply. So now all of these three are linked. If I go to my preview, I get to see how this looks. And as you notice, I can click on any one of these three because I do have my little pointer that lets me know that it is an active link. I click here and it'll take me directly to the sites. So I exit out of here and that's how I'm able to link images. You can also link text if you want to. Um, that is an option and you do it the same way. Now, we've done a lot there with images. Um, let's go ahead and um, look at embedding and how I can embed a site here. So I'm going to go ahead and click and notice that this is my choice to embed a link or embed code. 
So right now I'm going to try and link the Reading Renaissance site. So I'm gonna come out here. I have the Reading Renaissance site bookmarked. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this link, this URL address. I'm gonna go back to my site and I'm just gonna do a paste and notice what happens now. You have two options when you're embedding by the link, which is that URL, that address that you saw me grab from the Renaissance site, that's what I'm plugging in right here. Notice that it shows me a preview of what it's gonna look like on my site, and that's what I'm going to insert. I am gonna show you how you can embed code, and I'm just gonna, for right now, show you how this looks on your website. So right here now, my students can click right here and take a test from straight from my website. So this little arrow lets me know that I can open this in a new tab. And if I go to the preview mode, you'll see that I now have the Renaissance here site. You can always adjust the site. I'm just gonna, I'm just kind of showing you how you can add a link and embed it there in your site. So I want to have a title header announcing that now this is a different section. So notice right here, remember going back to this, I can change my background here, but notice what it says right here. I can duplicate that section. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and I've got these little dots that I can pull on and drag down. And now I can section and call attention that these are two different things. Um, I can change the title here to Reading Renaissance. And so today. And now again, I don't want it to look the same. I want there to be some differentiate, uh, some different colors to differentiate the sections. So I'm gonna go over here again to um, my select an image, and I may choose this time this um, gray. And I select it, and now I have a distinction in the sections. So that is embedding a site there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go to pages so that we can look at pages. Notice that I have my home page, which is this is the canvas that I'm working on. If I add a page, notice that I have those two options to create a new link or a new page. Now, this is something that is awesome because it creates an external link, not necessarily a page on your website. It will take them to a external site. So I love this option. So let's try this new option. I'm going to click right here and I'm going to link. Um, let's link Flipgrid. So I'm going to go out here to make sure that I get the right link. I bookmarked flink, uh, picture bookmarked to Flipgrid. So I'm just going to grab this address. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to type in that URL. I click on done. Notice that it gives me the option. What do I want this uh, link to do? I want it to open up in another tab. I want still to have my Google Sites tab open. I want this Flipgrid for them for my students to go to Flipgrid. I want them to be able to go into Flipgrid on another tab. So I click on done and notice now that I have Flipgrid as an external link. Now, how does this look on my page when my students access it? My navigation bar will tell my students that there are different pages on my Google site. And this is how they know. They now have a home button that they could go to. 
and now they have the option to go to Flipgrid. When I click here, notice what happens. It sends me to Flipgrid. And it's there, and let me make it active preview so you can see how it will take me. Let me click this one out. I click here, and it's gonna take me to Flipgrid. You can do this with your Renaissance site, you can do it with Imagine Learning. Instead of having maybe your resources right here, you can have them as links on your navigation. So just so that you can see that this is where your different pages will appear. Now remember when we looked at our different options for navigation in our settings, I have the option to choose whether I want them on the top of my page or if I want them to the side. Now notice where they go when I click on the side. They are no longer here. I want everybody to be able to see my pretty header, so I don't want any distractions up here. I can just come to my pancakes, my three lines, and now they can go to my pages right here. So that is in my settings, in my navigation mode, right here is where I choose where I want my pages to show up. So on the top, you'll see them right here. On the side, you'll see the pancakes over here next to your logo. So now we're gonna create just a blank page. So I'm just going to put here, um, let's put um, resources. You can put, uh, link uh, or week, week one of remote learning, week two, and you can organize your, yourself that way. You can choose a different custom path that you want them to go to, but right here you have those options. So now I have my resource page, and notice how it created a new page here for me with the same header. You can customize your header for each of your pages. So if you want to create another custom banner that says resources, with your Bitmoji, with your class picture, with the different resources that are on this page, that's entirely up to you. That's um, leveling up uh, your page, but you can just choose from the gallery if you want to, or just keep that same one consistently through all your, your web pages. I do want you to explore these three dots when you're looking at the pages, because you can make one of these a home page. You can duplicate the page here, and you can also hide the navigation. So what happens when we already publish the site, our students already have access, and you're working on next week's uh, resources, if that's what you're choosing to do. You don't want your students to see that you're working on anything like that, so you're going to choose to hide this from the navigation. And if I choose that, you'll notice that there is a line through that page that lets me know that my viewers cannot see this page because I'm, it's still not ready to be published. It's still not ready for my students or my teacher's eyes. I can, I can uh, hide it until I'm ready for them to see it. A lot of the breakout sessions, they link all of their different um, locks to their website. And this is how they, the people that are trying to figure out the breakout, they don't see the sites that you're redirecting them to. So this is the, the, the way that it's used in breakout sessions. So for right now, I want to show it in the navigation. And again, when I go to my home page, if I click on my navigation, you see that I have the different pages here on my site. So really quick and easy to add a new link to an external link or create a new page on your site. Now you are not limited to the number of pages. You just want to make sure that it's, it's within reason. You don't want to have a ton of pages and confuse your kids. Um, so package everything or think about like topics and how you want to organize your pages. So, the next thing we're going to look at is the different themes. So if I, when I click on themes, you'll notice that right now I'm using the simple theme. I can choose what color I want my theme. 
and this will change some of the different banners or dividers or the text. Notice that I can change my font style. I can change it to classic and it will change my font here. I can choose to use heavy and it changes my font style here. I can even add my own custom color. So if you have a hex code um, and that's getting like real technical in the color, there is a way for you to use custom colors. So just so that you can see, if I want to use the blue that's in here, I can use, and this is a Chrome extension I'm going to use. It's called Colorzilla. And I'm going to pick a color from my web page. When I click here, it's going to give me these little crosshairs. And notice what's happening at the top. I'm getting all the different colors that I can choose from this web page to use as a custom color. So if I want to use this blue that's in my sky here, or it's a little delayed here. Let me go. It's a little delayed, but it's kind of reading all the different places that I'm putting these little crosshairs. So if I want to use this color, all I have to do is click there and it has copied this to the clear the clipboard. And notice it gave me a little pound sign with some, some numbers and letters. So if I want to do a custom one, all I have to do is do a paste and notice that now I have a custom color that I can change it to. So that's a little techie, um, but you, there, you have the option with that little paint can, can to change your colors. If I choose this thing, again, you're going to see that I have changed the font. They've now added this little line here and again, I have different fonts that I can choose from. Diplomat, again, your different colors, your different font types. Vision, again, it changes things within my sections. I can choose colors here as well and font styles as well. You have level, again, your different font styles here different colors that come with it. And then the last one is impression. And notice how this divider color changed. If I don't like that divider color, I can make it um, uh, gray, I can make it green, I can make it orange. And again, using that custom color, I can change that color. So those are the different things that you can choose from. So the last couple, the, we're getting ready to wrap things up. I'm going to show you how we can embed um, something from Google Drive, a YouTube video, and then a Google Slides. So I'm going to choose the first. I'm going to choose something from Google Drive. So as I mentioned before, sometimes we want our students to check in with us, or sometimes we want to have. Um, something for them either in Google Classroom so that they can ask us a question. So I created a form that says ask, a, ask the teacher. So I have this form in my Google Drive. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here. So it's going to open up my Google Drive. I have this form hopefully in my folder. I don't. So I can click ask the teacher. And hopefully it'll come up. So here is where I have that ask the teacher form. So I'm going to click here and notice what happens on the bottom. It says, do I want to insert this file or this, uh, yes, this form from Google Drive. So I can, can click, uh, click on insert and right away my form has been embedded here and my students can click 
and they can write and ask me a question on my Google site. Again, really important to have something like this for our students to reach out to us if they have a question, especially if you say, you know, if they might be working on something in the evening, your office hours are from eight to four, you might want to make sure that they direct their question here. And if you have the time, you can answer back to them, but know that you'll answer them the next day or so. So they can, you can embed this Google form here, doing just what I did right there. Now through Google Drive, I can kind of click there to make it a little smaller. If you want to see what this looks like on the live site, you will see that now it has this form and they can start clicking right here and then submit it right away to you. They also have that image with the arrows where they can click right out and they have, they'll have access to the form in this manner. But right from your site, they can click that form. Very easy to use. Um, it may look a little big here, and, and that's, that may be something that you don't like. What you could do is maybe take a picture of a form, uh, the logo, and just link that photo to the form if you want everything to kind of be nice and compacted on your Google site. You just have to play around with what works for you um, as far as aesthetics, how you like to look at it. A question on embedding. Um, how were you able to embed the Renaissance Learning website? Okay, I'll show you right now. Let me just go ahead and I'm going to delete this. I'm going to, on my canvas, I'm going to go ahead and embed. This is the one that I use, these little arrows. Um, this is what I use for that link. So I click right here and I went to the Renaissance site. You can go to the district site to get that. I happen to have it bookmarked. I go ahead and do a control C or a command C to copy that. I come back to my website and I do a control V or a command V and this is how it pulls it up. Now notice when it says embed from the web, you have URL and you have embed code. I still haven't gone over this and I'll show you, but as long as you have the URL, you can embed it into your site. So I click insert and now I can move this into a section and now I move it here to the middle and I can work with this site. I kind of want to work with the middle there. And again, once I preview the site, they'll see the Renaissance site and it'll be able to click here. Again, some things uh, I need to kind of expand it here to make it look and you'll have to kind of play around and tweak um, your picture so that it comes out to the size that you want. You just double click here. I want them to be able to see their full option to, so it's they're centered in the middle and then again, they'll have access to that site right away. Now, I wanna separate my form again for my reading renaissance all I have to do is duplicate the section. I grab onto these little dots right here and I bring it down. And now I can put, ask the teacher. And I have that here and it's embedded. Now this isn't the only way that you can add a Google form. I used that um, using Drive. But notice when I scroll down here, you have the option to add a form. And then it pulls up the form. So this is that survey that I gave out. So right away, I see it. I want to click on it. Again, you'll get that option to insert. And now I've inserted another form. Now I can take this and I can move it up here. There you go. Oops. 
And now I have that form for my survey here. It concludes the whole survey. Again, I double click it. To get my little dot so that I can make it a little smaller and you just have to kind of work with the um, form in order to get it to your liking and the size. It is a little clunky like that. That's my only kind of gripe with Google slide, uh, Google Sites is that you kind of have to work with it a little bit to kind of get the sides right or the size right and get it centered. I want it on this site and to get those different ways of seeing it. Again, different ways to kind of modify it. If you do not want to see it embedded like this, all you have to do is grab an image and link that Google slide to it. So the next thing we're going to do is, and I'm going to use a different page. I'm going to go to my pages and I'm going to go to my resources so that I'm working with another canvas right here. I'm going to put in a Google Slides template. Now, when I gave my Google Classroom training, I said that maybe you might want to consider creating a Google Slides for the week or even for the day so that your students can see um, what they have to do for that day and kind of organize it that way so they're not overwhelmed in seeing the whole week's lesson or trying to figure out what did I turn in, what did I not turn in. So I'm going to go to my insert and just like I did with forms, I'm gonna to go to slides. And now it's gonna pull up all the slides that I've created and it's gonna ask me which slides I want to embed here on my um, resources page. So I liked this daily schedule. This is one that I included as a template to uh, on my Google Classroom presentation. I'm gonna click insert and notice that it embeds this Google Slides to the page. And now I can add some text here and say, students, this is what you have assigned for the day. And that way they know that this is what they have to do. And notice what I did here. I actually linked that assignment to the Google Classroom assignment. So just what, so they can see at a glance and they can be directed straight to the Google assignment. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like for them. So when I preview the page, this is what the students will see. The Google Slides has been embedded they can choose to uh, open it in another tab. But if they click right here, watch what happens. They click here and it is linked straight to their assignment. So very easy for our students to see what they need to get done for that day. They don't have to even log into Google Classroom and go to their classwork. If you have a template set up like this, all they have to do is click right here and it goes straight to that assignment. So lots of things to play around with and consider on how you wanna package your assignments, your resources, your classroom, and using Google Sites as a landing page uh, for your students and your parents to look at and have all of these resources in one place. I like using both Google Classroom and Google Sites together for this reason. They go hand in hand and you're constantly updating announcements or if you want to uh, highlight pictures of the week of assignments that you've gotten back that have done a good job and so that your parents can see, that your students can see, you can add pictures there um, and just, Something new that has just been added is this image carousel. And when you choose here, you can select various images and it will create a carousel of 
a, like a slideshow of all the different images that you can embed here in your, your site. The last thing I'm going to go ahead and show you is how do I link a YouTube video that my students need to watch? So again, you'll see that, that YouTube uh, option here on your insert. I click here and you'll notice that I have a video search where if I go to YouTube and I want them to watch something specific, all I have to do is click or copy and paste that link right here and I can do that. So I'm going to go, since I have my YouTube channel, it already recognizes the video that I have uploaded to YouTube. So what I wanna do is I'm going to choose this one. And this is my short tutorial on how to create your Google Classroom banner. So I click here and I select, and now my video is embedded in the site and they can watch straight from here. So what does that look like to the students? Again, they're on that resource page. They have their assignment. I can link the video that they need to watch right there on that site. And if I click here, it will start playing that video. Okay. So lots of things to kind of play around with, like I said, um, and, and look at uh, with Google Sites, you have as many uh, sites that you want to create. You can delete them. If you don't like them, restart from scratch. You can also, again, use that template um, to make it a little bit uh, like you have that skeleton where you can start plugging in some of the things that I've shown you. But this is just kind of a very basic overview of Google Sites. Can more be done with this? Yes. If I had a whole day training, I would love to, to go slower on some of these things to help um, show how you can do every single thing a little slower. But right now we have limited time, but I do wanna give you the tools so that you can start uh, playing around with and looking at and seeing if this can fit in your classroom and start thinking about next year. How can I implement and start getting my classroom page ready for next year? Um, so that as, as soon as we start the year, I can hit the ground going with being able to share my site out with um, students, with parents, with my administration, so they know and see uh, my classroom page and how they can contact me and all the resources that I'm sharing, all the celebrations, you can, you can add them to the site. So this is um, a great tool. Um, hopefully, these, you can use it. And um, I'm available for questions. OK, so there's a few questions. Um, can you show how you can add a collaborator? OK, so right here, when I click on that little person with a plus, it asks me here who I want to set, uh, share it with. Now, this is very important. Remember I said on the settings, if I want only the people that have the link to see it, I don't want people, if they're looking for Miss Bettis's classroom, um, if they do a search like that, I don't want it to come up. I want it just to be for my students because I'm including student pictures or whatever it may be. So all I have to do is click change right here and you're gonna see how I can share it out. Anyone can find or anyone at La Jolla ISD can find and view the published version. So it's within the domain. Now, when I cancel right here, I can invite only specific people. So if I want Ms. Prem Garza to be able to collaborate with me, I can add her here to my site and send it to her and she will get notified that she is now able to collaborate and add things to this site as well. Kind of like a co-teacher in Google Classroom, you are giving them the privilege to edit your site. I click on done and they're able to see it. That's how I was able to add my, that template to my EDU account. 
is by adding them as a collaborator, collaborator right up here. Share with others. Okay, next one is a video. How can you add a, if I made a video, how can you add a video to the Google Sites? Okay, so let me show you how you can do that. Um, right here, I'm gonna double click. Now, you saw that I added straight from YouTube. Now, maybe you didn't publish it on YouTube. So I'm gonna go to my drive. And I'm going to go to, I have a video in my Juarez Lincoln High School of um, the students, uh, let's see, hmm. I have this school leaders, but I know I have another one. Let me see if I go to my drive. I think it's by... I think I have it by year, here it is. So I have images that I could, I have here, um, not here, sorry guys. Maybe it's in this one, no. I know I had a video in here. So let me just embed this one. Notice that it's not from YouTube, but it is a video. All I have to do is click on it, just like I did for the form for the Google Slides. I click on insert and that video now will be here. So just as easy as you do, if it's on your computer, you'll wanna upload it to your Google Drive. So upload the video that you want to share on the website to your Google Drive, and then you'll be able to embed it here in your Google site using that Google Drive option right here. So I can do it one more time just so that you can see. Double click, I go to my drive, and if I just do file type, if I go to videos, it might be easier to find my videos this way. These are all my Screencastify videos. Um, I can just uh, upload any of these videos to my site. So this is the site or the, the video that I had of my son submitting his assignment using his phone, using Google Classroom. So if I go to the published, site i scroll down you'll be able to watch this video from my drive upload so he's working on his problem of the day and i know you can't hear the audio on it but that's how easy it is straight from google drive you can add that video but you do need to upload that video on google drive Next one is, how can you add a banner animation? Banner animation, I have not tried that on um, Google Sites. I know you can do it on Google Classroom using a website called Tall Tweets. And let me just show you. I know that there might be a way of doing it. I just haven't done it. If you want to create your own, you can do it and they show a a tutorial on how you can create a GIF um, and embed it. I just don't know if it'll recognize it. I don't know if you know, Carlos, on the header. I know the you can would, do it in the classroom. The way I would do it on uh, Google Sites <laughs> is using Google Slides as the animation source okay. and just have it play automatically with a loop. Yeah. So I know that's, that's kind of a little advanced i know it can be probably done um i just i i haven't uh, played around with um the animated images in the background okay so the other one is can you do the reading renaissance or the ar side again embedding okay. it sure so again here on my canvas i you see this little dotted line I'm going to double click here and I'm going to go to embed. 
So I'm going to, again, pull that link that I got from Reading Renaissance. I'm going to highlight it all, do a Command C or Control C that I copied it. I'm gonna come back here to my URL and do a Command or Control V and it pastes it there. So I have it right here. This is what it's gonna look like on my page. I insert it and this is how I do that. And I can, use my little dots to center it, kind of uh, move it around and kind of uh, make it a little smaller. And then again, how do I know that it's live? I click on preview and I check the link. And then they're able to access, if they're a student, they click here. It might go to this, but just so that you know, if that doesn't work that way, um, you can always um, do this option here and open a new tab and it'll take them there. Or again, going back to your pages, clicking right here and making it part of one of your pages. So if I wanna put reading Renaissance, and then again, copying that same link right here. I click done and now it's a, a live link here on my page. So if you get that error message, just so that you know there is another way to get to there or give your students a quick link to get to the Reading Renaissance site. Now, one thing that I am going to, I, I forgot to show you is the embed. So again, I'm going to click here and notice that I have an embed code right here. You see that you're gonna type in a code here. Now I'm gonna go here to Flipgrid and if I want to embed my Flipgrid for my students to respond to, I can do that. So I'm gonna log into my Flipgrid account. I've created a grid for remote learning. For teachers, in case you have a Google Classroom question, they can go to the grid, ask it using Flipgrid, and I can respond. So this is the grid that I wanna share. So if I click share, you'll notice that I have these little arrows right here, and that is embed code. There are different ways that I can share this link, and notice how it, it syncs or it smashes with um, uh, uh, Google Classroom. So I copy here the embed code. It's been copied. Now I'm gonna go back to my site and it's as easy as just doing a control V. And now it's gonna show me this grid is gonna be embedded in my site. So if my teachers wanted to ask me a question on Flipgrid, they would have this grid that they can respond to. What does it look like live? When I go down to that, all they have to do is click, they have this question, and I direct them, if they wanna use this grid to ask a question that they might have on Google Classroom, all they have to do is click right here, and they can record that response. It will ask them to log in through Google, and right away, I give them the account that I want them to use, and I can use the camera here or import a video. So right in my Google site, I can embed a Flipgrid. They're asking for part two of this training. Oh, okay. Um, well, um, well, put the comments in or in the survey that you fill out. Um, I would recommend you telling me like more that you want to see what you want to see more of. So that way we can um, kind of cater the part two to specific things you want to see. On that okay. note, can you show the survey link? Yes. If there's any no more questions, I can go ahead and put that link up. None of these, and, and again, some of you might say, um, I'm not seeing my site or my students are not seeing. 
remember that in order for your students to grab that link or to be able to see that link, you need to click on publish. And notice that it gives me that web address. And this is what I was talking about, that it gives me this really long address. So that's why I short link it. So when I click on publish, it's going to make my site live. It's ready. So now when I go to this link, I'm going to copy this. You see, this is too long of a link for me to give out. Now, if I'm sharing it in Google Classroom, not a problem. But if I want people to type something in, I'm going to copy that link and I can go to Bitly, which is a short link URL um, management. And I can go to create and I can paste that URL link right here and I can make it shorter. I can even customize it. So if I put Miss Betty's class, I can go ahead and do that, save it, and now everybody can um, access it with bit.ly backslash Miss Bettis' class. Now, there's another, I'm not going to burn that, that, that link because with bit.ly, I can't edit that link again. So I, I don't want to take that link away. Um, so there's another short URL maker called Tiny URL. And you can, again, put that there and you can customize it right here with Ms. Bettis' class. Instead of bit.ly, it'll be tiny URL backslash Ms. Bettis' class. So a couple of places where you can um, shorten that URL link and customize it. I happen to use Rebrandly. Um, I think I paid um, $10 for this service um, because I wanted techlibrarian.tech. And so that's how I customize my links. When you see that tech librarian, it's because I've done so through rebrand, Rebrandly and I'm able to see statistics. I can create a QR code with this link, um, all of these different options that I have with these links. Notice that right here gives me, if I want to create a QR code, I can do that. Um, so this is a, a service that you can use as well. It's just if you want your own specific uh, like name here or brand, you, can, you have to pay like a, a, a small fee. It's not expensive, but I, I chose to do that. <clears throat> So that is in publishing. If I want to unpublish, I can unpublish and then I've got it. It will no longer be active. <coughs> Any other questions? That's yep. pretty much all I see. Yeah, oh, 10 month, uh, $10 is it monthly or yearly? Uh, a one time fee. Okay. Um, on the side note, I'll talk to you personally about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Another one is, can we link Google Classroom to it? Yes. And, um, let me show you how to do that. I actually say, for example, right here, the way that you have to do it is not using this embed link. I did it using an image because when I tried to use the link for Google Classroom, it only showed it as um, text. So what I did is I clicked on an image and I'm going to Google Drive. And I'm just going to search Google Classroom. And you can see that I already have a couple of images here for Google Classroom. So I'm just gonna choose this one and I'm gonna put it in here. Push it here to the side. And again, notice that when I do this, I can link it. So I'm going to go to my Google Classroom and say it's this um, Google Classroom training site that I want to. I'm going to go ahead and do a copy, Control C, C, 
come back to my site, paste it here, and apply it. So now it is linked. By clicking on this image, my students will be able to go to the site, their Google Classroom. If I want to add the text on the bottom, I can just add click on image to access your classroom. I can just center that here. And then once I go live, I click on this image and it's taking them straight to my classroom. So that's a kind of a little workaround so that your students have an image to click. Um, I know that the Google, Google Sites does have like a button feature, but you can't customize that button very well. So I choose to link images so that my kids get that visual um, and then it's linked to the site where I want to take them. If you unpublish, will the URL shortener still work? Yeah. Yes, as long as you have, well, with Bitly, the one that you, the link always stays the same. So when I publish it again, it'll be the same link. So as long as you have that same link, you can, you, you'll, you'll be able, your shortener will, have, will stay the same. Okay, from there, all I see is Happy Librarians Week. You're thank awesome. You. Thank and you. thank you for your knowledge. I know I've given you all a bunch of stuff and it's kind of like overload, but you know, um, we have a little bit of time now kind of to play around um, and, and get prepared to learn some of these new things that we can start implementing next year um, or you know, during the summer, if some of you all are gonna be using uh, virtual classrooms. Uh, you might want to start working on creating your site so that you can have um, your your students um, go to one site and, and make it easier for them and package everything really nice and neat for them. So let me go ahead and put up our um, our survey. Um, this, like I said, when you click on that survey, this is what you'll get links to. I have linked the URL shortener that I shorteners that I talked about. I have linked how to customize your own banner here. This is a Google um, cheat sheet for sites. So it kind of walks you through the different steps a little slower and it's like a PDF so you can kind of look at it. Um, and here is the site in case you are on Twitter and you want to embed your Twitter feed there so that your students can see what you're sharing out any announcements or if you all have a class site you can do that as well um, so i've included that in the slides presentations i'll be sharing um, i'm just asking to be a little bit patient because i do have to edit some of the videos that i've been presenting on this week i know i haven't got shared or i haven't sent out that resources for the screencastify for the virtual libraries for the Google Classroom Mobile, and now this one. You will get the copies of all of the resources I use, plus the video in an email from me. So please make sure you include your email there in that survey. I think it asks you already for your email um, so that I can get these resources to you. And here is that link. There was a question um, on linking to Class Dojo and Seesaw. I believe you can um, to this site as long as you have the, your URLs. Um, and it, 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 as long as you just do what I, I did with uh, the Google Classroom, once you're in the Seesaw class that you want to link to, just copy that link into maybe a picture of Seesaw so that they know that you, that's what they're clicking on or going to be directed to, is you click on that little Seesaw logo, link uh, that specific URL to your class, just like I did with Google Classroom. San Juanita, um, you're asking about .net or .com. I'm not sure to 
what reference? On, on the email that you want to put, um, either or. Uh, it, I, I, I'm sending it through the .NET account. Yes, thank you, Ms. Bettis. The .NET is the official email for our district, so we should always be checking the .NET. Thank you. Fabulous training, of course. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Also, reminder, for those of you that are still on, uh, include comments of what you would like to see if Ms. Bettis is able to do a part two. I think that Google Sites is an amazing tool to organize everything you have uh, for kids, especially for online learning. So please don't forget to do that. And she will definitely take a look at that and hopefully we can create. Uh, I did post on the chat for those of you that are still here that we will be having on uh, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. We will be having a live Google Meet session with Mr. Garza and also an uh, Google EDU question and answer session. Ms. Bettis and Mr. Garza will be available to answer any of your questions that you may have on anything Google. Uh, it'll be at 1.30 for the Q&A and 10 o'clock for the Google Meet, and that will be posted soon, hopefully. Once they are, I will send out a district distribution for everyone so that you know uh, that it's been posted. But keep checking PDS nonetheless. Somebody asks, is the link for the survey still working? It says link not found. Um, just make sure that it, it's case sensitive. Um, it should be still working. Um, let me try it on my end here. Hmm. Yes, it's working. So I know that I get uh, a lot of questions. Hopefully you all took a picture of that survey. I get a lot of questions on how I create some of my, my banners for my um, Google forms and I use a tool. Um, I don't know if you all saw this. Um, on my Google, if you see this little banner here, um, I use Canva. So teachers, if you are not using Canva, this is an amazing tool. And I have it bookmarked right here, but it's just www.canva.com. I always have so much to share and I, I wanna share all of these things with you guys, but you can sign up for a free educator account and this is templates for anything that you want to create. If you want to create a flyer, a poster, a logo, a calendar, a presentation, I create a lot of my designs using, using Canva because they have all of these neat little templates available. So if you look here, like I've created my YouTube um, thumbnails, um, using Canva, Google check-in forms, headers for my um, Google site. Um, there's a lot of things that I've created here using Canva. Um, so you can apply for that educator account so that you can have access to some of the pro features because it's Canva for education. I, um, I don't know if I can find that link so that I can post it in the chat. All you do is you need to um, apply for this account. You just fill out the form and I, I will put this in the chat um, and you will get access to all the pro features of Canva. I know that some people use Poster My Wall, which is another one that offers an EDU account, um, but offers like templates that you can create. Uh, this is another template um, site that you can use to design 
a lot of flyers, a lot of custom things that you want to do with your Google Classroom or with your Google site, you can do it with Canva. So let me go ahead and post this in the site. I think that that's like a, a great topic for a session. Just yeah. that. Just <laughs> I think you had planned to do that, right? Yes. But they can apply for this um, education so they can start getting all the pro features um, and playing around with the different sites. Like I said, the templates, um, these are the different templates that you get. If you have um, Instagram, the Facebook posts, uh, flyers, um, you can even enroll your, your kids to do designing. Um, that you can create a class with them and they can they can do this. I know at our uh, at Wattis Lincoln, our social studies teachers um, had their students create like a brand and like a um, they either had a restaurant or or something, but they created their own brand and they had to kind of create a flyer to promote their brand. So a lot of very cool, you even have resumes here, uh, posters, and like I said, infographics, so many things to choose from here. Uh, I think they even had now animated um, backgrounds. Oops, let me go back. Where did I see it? Invitations, it keeps on putting me in. But you have all of these different templates you can use. So.